I want to move on now to the hydrologic cycle or the water cycle. Because a water cycle, of course, is a major part of the ocean and the ocean participates in this cycle in a very big way. And so it's a good time while we're talking about how sediments might be transported or even created and transported and carried into the ocean. It's a good time to take a look at the hydrologic cycle. Simply defined, the hydrologic cycle is the solar and gravity driven movements of water through various reservoirs on our planet. And when I'm talking about a reservoir, I'm talking about a place where you find lots of water, just like a pan is a reservoir for water. The ocean is the largest reservoir for water. Our atmosphere is another reservoir, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. It's a natural starting point, of course, for understanding sedimentary processes and seeing how changes in the hydrologic cycle can change sediments uh, and change the kinds of sediments that we find at the bottom of the ocean. So we're really putting together a lot of things in this chapter that we learned earlier, both uh, having to do with plate tectonics, having to do with isotopes, having to do with sediments and seafloor. So we're beginning to put all that stuff together in our minds, hopefully. All right. We shouldn't forget that even though we're talking about in the hydrologic cycle, mostly processes that occur in the ocean, there's an important hydrologic cycle that occurs on land as well. In fact, it's that hydrologic cycle on land that supplies our water, our drinking water. So let's keep that in mind as we talk about this. Okay, this is an illustration from the book again in chapter five. And the hydrologic cycle is really part of Earth's hydrosphere. It plays an important role in many of Earth's processes. The hydrologic cycle interacts with other major Earth systems, such as the atmosphere and the biosphere and the lithosphere, a term we encountered when we talked about plate tectonics. The hydrologic cycle supplies water for food, it changes and carves the face of our planet. It sustains life. It provides us with recreation. It moderates our climate. It interacts with Earth's interior. It dissolves rock. And it really can creates a dynamic, ever-changing planet that we might enjoy from time to time. In scientific terms, the hydrologic cycle is a model for where water is stored on Earth and how it moves from one place to another. So it's a model for reservoirs such as the world ocean, lakes and rivers, ice caps, the atmosphere, and how that water moves from one place to the other. Scientists define hydrologic reservoirs where the water is stored, hydrologic pathways, how water moves from one reservoir to the next, hydrologic rate processes, how fast water moves from one, rather, one reservoir to another by some particular process. The major hydrologic reservoirs include the world ocean, and we divide the world ocean up into the mixed layer, the thermocline layer, a term we'll get to in a little bit in a few chapters but basically the layer that's between the warm surface waters and the cold abyssal waters. The atmosphere is a reservoir for water and we divide it into the marine atmosphere and the terrestrial atmosphere. Ice and snow is also a major reservoir for water including the polar ice caps and of course water on land both water that we find in lakes and rivers, and subsurface water. The groundwater is also a major reservoir. But of course, as you can see here, the world ocean is the largest reservoir. Land sources, lakes, and if you think about the Great Lakes and many of the other world's lakes, that's the second largest reservoir. Ice and snow, third, groundwater, Fourth, and the atmosphere being the smallest reservoir for water. But let me emphasize, even though 
the atmosphere is the smallest reservoir for water, those clouds that are produced as part of the atmosphere are very important. So size isn't always a good indicator of how important a reservoir is. The World Ocean Reservoir includes all the waters contained within the ocean basins, including uh, sea ice. It's divided into the mixed layer, the thermocline layer, and the abyssal layer because each layer transport and exchanges water in different ways. And those are things we'll begin to appreciate more as we move into ocean circulation. So our chapters on physics and, the, and ocean circulation will play, give us a better understanding of the hydrologic cycle as it occurs in the ocean. Land reservoirs, of course, include, include surface waters in lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. Ice and snow reservoir includes land fast ice, glaciers, snow, and permafrost. This is Mount Shasta. Perhaps some of you have visited there before. Underground water includes water in underground caverns, in the soil, sediments, the water that's really essentially beneath our feet. And water in the sky, the terrestrial and marine atmosphere. And because those parts of the atmosphere, the atmosphere over the ocean behaves differently than the atmosphere over land, we make a distinction between those two reservoirs. The hydrologic cycle is driven by the sun, soul, and as we can, as we'll see or as we'll discover, the sun actually, okay, let's go back. The hydrologic cycle is driven by the sun. It's the sun's energy that moves water to higher elevations, so to speak, by, for example, evaporating water over the ocean and transporting it into the atmosphere and then creating winds, differences in air pressure that causes that wind to move water vapor over land where it falls and then through gravity comes back into the ocean. It's the power of the sun that drives the hydrologic cycle. Here we see an example where water is evaporated over the ocean. That water vapor is transported by winds. Those clouds condense and precipitate, causing water to flow downwards as a result of gravity. And through that gravity-driven runoff, the water returns to the ocean again. This is the cycle part of the hydrologic cycle. And these are the pathways by which water moves from one reservoir, the ocean, to other reservoirs, the sky and land in this case. Other pathways may be evaporation of water through trees, the process of evapotranspiration which is the movement of water through the leaves of trees. Water may percolate into the underground reservoir or into groundwater where it may flow into the ocean. Water may also be evaporated directly over the ocean and fall directly over the ocean. This would be a very short cycle. So there are a number of different ways for water to move about the planet and really that is the focus of the hydrologic cycle. 